Welcome back to Glass of Cow. I'm Wenny. I'm Wenny. And if you want to master Mandarin, you don't want to miss this video. Did you know there are four different tones, si shen in Mandarin? Some said it has five or even six tones. But let's not make things too complicated for now. We'll talk about it more in a bit. And if you haven't checked out our four tones challenge video, click the link here. But let me first give you an idea of how the four tones sound. Ma, 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 ma. Did you pick up the difference? In English, we actually use tones as well. Native English speakers are already perfectly capable of manipulating the pitch of their voice. The difference is that we use pitch to convey emotion. But in Mandarin, it's a more regular mechanical thing used to differentiate words, similar to how in English, present is a noun and present is a verb. In Mandarin, something really important you need to understand is that tones can change what you mean based on the circumstance. For example, when you're ordering a plate of steamed dumplings and you say 睡觉 instead of 睡觉, you might confuse the cashier into thinking you're actually tired. Let me show you more of how it works. Let's start with the first tone. We call it 第一声。Dishen is a steady and level, meaning it doesn't rise or fall. For example, gao is first tone, dishen. Following with the second tone, it's di er shen, is a rising tone. The word cha is second tone. The third tone, it's di san shen, is the sound that falls and then rises. You can also call it a dipping tone, as in mai. The third tone can be tricky. It's only pronounced in its full form when in isolation or when strongly emphasized. Finally, we have the fourth tone. It's 第四声, a falling tone. The word 树 is pronounced using the fourth tone. Besides that, we have a fifth tone actually. The neutral tone 轻声, This this one's a bit tricky because it always only appears in the last character of a disyllabic or two-character noun. Well, if you want to master Mandarin, don't ever think about skipping tones. If you don't use it properly, people might not get what you're saying. For example, if you say 教师, it means teacher. And then 教室, it means classroom. Finally, 教室 means reef. Well, I get it, it's hard. Um, now that we have covered the basics, let's make things more interesting and talk about tone changes. As I mentioned in the beginning, we sometimes change the way we use the tones, which is 变调规则. There are three most important Mandarin tone changes, change rules. There are three most important Mandarin tone change rules. The first tone change rules is the third tone changes. This tone is hard to master because it is rarely pronounced the way it's supposed to be. The third tone usually changes when it's accompanied by another third tone character. The basic mandatory rules for tone changes involving the third tone are when you have to say a word and both characters have third tones. The first character tone will change to a second tone. Sorry if that sounds a bit confusing, but I'm sure you already know how to use it. You said it all the time. Ni hao. If more than one third tones appear in a word, only the last character is actually pronounced as a third tone. The others change to second tones, like exhibition hall. Zhan lan guan. Then we have a second rule, which is the four tone changes in the character bu, which means no. Trust me, this one is a very commonly used one, so you kind of have to learn it. If you have a word when both characters have a four tone, then the first character becomes a second tone. For example, bu dui. Finally, let me tell you about the third rule. First tone changes. If the first character is a first tone and it is followed by a fourth tone, it becomes a second tone, like in 一个, means one of something. 
the character E is special. If E or E comes before anything other than a fourth tone, it changes from first tone to a fourth tone, like in E qi. Now that you have learned the basic tone rule, I have some tips for you to keep on learning how to hear and pronounce these tones. Number one, speak and listen to Mandarin often. Find native speakers near you, like me. We also prepare a free PDF for practicing tones just for you. Go to our website below in the description. You can also download our new Glossika iOS app and practice your Mandarin tones on the go. Remember that tones don't have a universal or absolute pitch. The pitch of a tone is relative to the tones around it. The third tone of a young girl may be higher than the first tone of a grown man. Or the third tone of an excited voice can be higher than the first tone of a tired voice. Another fun fact, did you know that Mandarin speakers are more likely to have perfect pitch because it's a tonal language? And of course, I'm not gonna sing here. As with any language, it is important to understand the nuances of a language in order to sound native. The tip for a Mandarin is to focus on knowing how a second tone transitions into a first or third tone, rather than mastering a perfectly rising pitch. Learn to hear and pronounce tone pairs. All right, I hope you're not discouraged if you keep practicing, which is the number one key. If you need a little extra help, this is what we're here for. Let us know in the comments down below if you have some tips that you can share with your fellow learners to help them master the tones. Please don't forget to like or subscribe. It helps a lot. Until next time, 下次见。